the geometric series is a plus ar plus ar squared and so on. We need to prove that the sum of the first n terms of this series is sn is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. So I'm going to get a blank sheet here just for this bit. So let me start off by writing down the sum. So it's going to be s. The sum of the first n terms is going to be a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed and so on. All the way up to the nth term, which is going to be ar to the n minus 1. So that's the sum of all of the first n terms. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down exactly the same thing underneath, but I'm going to multiply it all by r. So I will have r times the sum of the first n terms. So a times r will be a r. a r times r will be a r squared. A r squared times A r is going to be A r cubed. A r cubed times r is going to be A r to the power of 4 and so on. Up to the nth term, the A r to the n minus 1 multiplied by r, well that's going to add 1 to the power of the r, so it's going to be A r to the power n. Now, underneath here, I am going to do the top line, take away the bottom line. I'm going to do Sn minus Rsn. And the reason why that's a good thing to do is because I will then have Ar take away Ar. They're going to cancel out and be zero. I'll have Ar squared minus Ar squared. They're going to cancel out and be zero. In fact, all of these terms in the middle are going to cancel out and give me zero. And the only terms that won't cancel out will be the a. And I'm going to take away the a r to the power n. So the only terms I'll be left with here is the a from the top. And remember, I'm taking away the a r to the n from the bottom. So we've managed to turn this whole long sum into just this. All I'm going to do now is factorise the s n from the left hand side, factorise the sum of the first n terms from the left hand side, which is going to give me this. Then I'm going to factorise the a out from the right hand side. And then I'm going to divide both sides to make the sum of the first n terms the subject. And then that's what we needed to show. So that's that proof done. We're then told that the first and second terms of a geometric series G are 10 and 9. So the first term is 10, the second term AR is 9. We need to find to three significant figures the sum of the first 20 terms of G. So we're going to be using this formula to do this. Like I say, we already know what A is. I can work out what R is because I know that 10 multiplied by R gives 9. So 10R equals 9. So R is 9 over 10 or 0 0.9. So our first term is 10. Our common ratio is 0 0.9. And we want the sum of n of 20 terms. So substituting all of those into our formula that we've just proved in part A, we can say that the sum is going to be equal to 10 times 1 minus 0 0.9 to the power 20 divided by 1 minus 0 0.9. 
and that's going to give us 87.8. So that's the sum of the first 20 terms. Part C, we want to find the sum to infinity, which we can do in this case because our common ratio is less than 1. So the sum to infinity does exist. So we can use the sum to infinity formula, which you do get given. It's a over 1 minus r. So a is 10 divided by 1 minus 0 0.9, and that's 100. So the sum to infinity is going to tend towards 100. We're then told that another geometric series has its first term equal to its common ratio. And we're told that the sum to infinity of this series is 10. Find the exact value of the common ratio of this series. So if its first term is equal to its common ratio, so if I call its first term a, as we usually do, and I'll, its common ratio must also be a then, if the first term is equal to the common ratio. The sum to infinity formula then would be a over 1 minus a, which is equal to 10. So rearranging this, timesing both sides by the 1 minus a. Expand out the brackets. Add the 10a to both sides. And divide both sides by 11. I find that a is 10 over 11. So that's my first term, but it is also the common ratio because we know they are equal to one another. So the common ratio is 10 over 11.